Well, good afternoon. Welcome, everybody. I see on my screen it's uh, impressive uh, names and people popping up. Uh, we have uh, today uh, over 200 persons registered. So uh, let's let's see uh, who comes. So yeah, good afternoon, everybody, to to our workshop on the strategies for a competitive and sustainable tourism sector. My my name is Luc. Luc Schmerber, I'm more thematic expert for SME competitiveness of the Interreg Europe Learning Platform. And I will be one of your hosts today together with, uh, with my colleagues, um, Marco Cittelli and Astrid Severin from TO6. They will they introduce themselves, they wave, so I hope you can see them. And uh, Mart, uh, Mart Veliste from uh, also the SME competitiveness. Uh, you recognize us at the Interreg Europe uh, background, it's easy. Um, so we will, um, and also we have uh, Eugenie in the background from our communication team. This is the person behind the policy learning platform, Orange Circle, yes, exactly. Thank you, Eugenie, who will help us um, through the event. In, in At any time, you might, uh, ask for help through the chat, for instance, uh, and even you will try to solve all the problems we, we, might, uh, we might have. You've noticed that the event is, uh, is re recorded. This is for reporting purposes. It will not be, the recording will not be published. And um, the breaks we will have and the discussions there will, uh, there will not be, uh, be, between the working session will not be uh, recorded. So, before we dive into the the topic of the of the workshop, I will uh, just provide a few information on um, the the agenda and uh, the policy learning platform. As I mentioned um, before, we have uh, quite a lot of people registered today, and also some newcomers who might not know us. And for the ones who know us, probably, hopefully, there will be some useful reminders. We decided to, to do this workshop together between two thematic uh, objectives. Uh, so the, the, among the project partners, you might not know each other so, so well, um, because we noticed that both from uh, this SME competitiveness um, sector and, and from the, the resource efficiency and environment, there were uh, projects dealing with uh, with tourism and sustainable tourism sector, and uh, as you see on my, my slide, I will not read it loud. We thought we have we had quite a lot to share and to have you sharing your experiences with this uh, this workshop. We've set up the, this uh, this agenda uh, as you so we will start after the, the, the introduction with uh, with a keynote discussion so where we will hear from uh, two interesting. Um, project uh, project uh, achievements so a few a bit more in a few minutes about that and after each of the the speech you will have um, the opportunity to to ask uh, questions this is this goes for the whole meeting obviously so you will be able to ask questions you can raise your hand that's helpful because there is a lot of people in the room and then you will be able to ask your questions uh, directly loud and to, to be on the screen or you can ask at any time your questions through the chat and then we will uh, also read them out to the, the speakers whenever uh, that will be the way you choose um, after after that we'll have a short break we'll have two three breaks in the afternoon uh, where you will uh, be we'll have the opportunity to meet some of the other participants in, in breakout rooms. You don't have to do anything during the, the whole meeting. You will be allocated to, to, the break, to the breakout rooms. And that goes also for the working groups, which come uh, after the first break. You'll see we have two working groups, one on the joint branding and multi-stakeholder stakeholder involvement programs, and one of the new geographically distributed and off-season tourism offers. You will be allocated to the groups you have selected um, by registration to the to the workshop. That will also happen automatically. You don't have to do anything. And after the working groups or the breaks, when, when you will be in breakout rooms, similarly, you will be brought back to the plenary or to the the groups you are you are allocated to. And that will be the same after the, the working group, a short break, and the report back 
going back to the plenary, report back from the working groups, and uh, a policy officer from the European Commission will give us a closing keynote speech on financial support. So that uh, that should be also um, uh, relevant. And uh, that will be the, the end of our workshop. And after that, some of you have already registered to some online expert help desk session. Uh, that will be the same. You will be all allo allocated directly to your roles. A few words about Interreg Europe. Uh, Interreg Europe has basically two pillars. Main pillars, so the most well, the well-known pillars are the projects in, uh, you see here in allocated into four thematic objectives. I think it's uh, around 260 projects, so 30 countries involved, and uh, 360 million invested in policy learning. And the policy learning platform is the second pillar of the of the program of Interreg Europe with our four services: the expert support, the community the knowledge up and the good practices, which are delivered in all of the four thematic objectives through the, through the portal and the experts like me and my colleagues today. I will say a few words about the services. We have the good practice database uh, with the good practices coming from the, the project, which are uh, selected and uh, um, assessed by the, by the experts. I have not updated the, the, the figures uh, this the, this week. It might be close to 2,000 or a bit above good practices available for all of the, in, in the four categories. So there is a lot of information you will find there. We also, as an expert, we compile the information and the results from the project into policy briefs dedicated to, to specific aspects of the covered by, by mostly several projects. Here you see, can see some examples of the, of the policy brief was produced in the, the two uh, thematic objectives we have uh, here today. Uh, Astrid, I thought you, you might feel like say a few words. I think you have one an additional policy brief which might be relevant to the, um, to the audience today. Yeah, thank you very much, Luc. Uh, yeah, we also have uh, just published a, a policy brief that is focusing on halting ocean plastics pollution. And that is also bringing a lot of interesting examples, uh, especially for tourist destinations at the coast so and at rivers. So that might be also of interest to you and uh, it's available on the Interreg Europe website. Yes, thank you, Astrid. Like yeah, all, all the policy briefs, the good practices. A uh, recent one pu 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 published by our colleagues on sustainable tourism strategies to contract over tourism, downloadable from, uh, uh, from, the, um, from the website. We have events, I will not go into, into details. You will find the events like our workshop today or webinars, which are shorter events. So usually we will find either a recording or at least a report on the events. Uh, webinars are recorded, workshops have um, some key learnings and some, some reports. Uh, upcoming events, very shortly, we come back to that by the end of the, of the meeting. Uh, next week, a workshop on scaling up European SMEs uh, with Mart and uh, two events, which will come in October and November for our colleagues um, from Environment and Resource Efficiency. Uh, more information a bit uh, towards the end of the, of the meeting. There will be also promoted on the website so the information is easily available. I close with the personalized policy advice, the peer reviews, the matching session, the policy help desk. A policy help desk like we will have also this afternoon or by email, it's uh, people ask a short question and we, uh, about the policy issues we answer with uh, providing links, information and so on. And that can trigger further going uh, exchanges like for instance, the matchmaking session when you can uh, have an online meeting or a physical meeting. It's been a long time we haven't had a physical matchmaking session at, at an event or something like this where you can team up with two or three peers from other organizations which uh, can answer your policy issues. This is typically something like a two hour meeting. And finally the peer reviews, which is two, which are typically two days meeting which can take place online or on site. 
and uh, going deeper compared to the matchmaking sessions there, you have four or five peers coming to your place and answering directly your specific questions, meeting your regional stakeholders as needed to try to solve a specific challenge you have in your region and to draft together with you some possible solutions. And that, that is something we, we uh, We've experienced quite a lot over the past uh, two, three years, and that that works very, very well according to the, the positive feedback we usually receive from um, from our uh, different hosts. At any time during the meeting, and also of course after the meeting, you can come back to Mart, to Astrid, to Mark, or myself with respect to those different uh, offers, and we can provide more information or directly uh, ask questions, obviously. This is for our this short introduction. I will give the word for to Astrid for um, a short poll uh, to the audience. Thank you very much, Luc. Yeah, uh, so we also wanted to get to know you a little bit better. And uh, hence we have uh, two short polls, which we would like to ask you to fill in. Uh, so Eugenie, if you could launch the first one. Uh, and the second one as well. So the first one is a single choice, of course, uh, where we just want to understand what is your background. If you are from a regional or local authority or a body with a public mission, including academia, a tourism organization, because we are speaking about sustainable and competitive to tourism today, an NGO or another organization. And the second, Paul, uh, we would like to ask you, how are you planning to improve the competitiveness and sustainability of your tourism strategy? This is multiple choice, so you can uh, check all of them, which would be actually, uh, I think, a very good idea. So uh, are you planning to do branding programs, um, have uh, multi-stakeholder involvement uh, projects or programs? Are you tackling geographically and off-season uh, tourism offers? or you are trying to increase your natural and uh, cultural heritage. And finally, very important point, uh, are you working on a digitalization where you can have better, for example, information uh, of your tourist flows, accessibility, and so on. So please vote now. <laughs> So let's see who we're having here today. <clears throat> so we have uh, quite a lot of regional and uh, local authorities. Uh, very good. I think there's a lot of interesting things you will learn and a good spread of other uh, involved organizations as well. And uh, with regard to, uh, yeah, a very good approach. Everybody is uh, trying to work in these different areas. So a lot of information, how to improve, how to get inspiration will be with us today. And I see that uh, one actually important aspect, which is branding is uh, not being tackled by everybody. So uh, I think here we will uh, also have some excellent examples, how this can be used uh, to make your uh, strategies more uh, competitive uh, and sustainable. So thank you very much, Eugenie. For, uh, for launching these polls. And uh, I give the word back to, uh, to Luc for introducing our first speaker, please. Yes, thank you, Astrid. And uh, yes, I would uh, definitely recommend that uh, the people make, uh, try to make use also after the workshop of the, the knowledge and of our services and needs, and that, that we hopefully will be able to initiate uh, connections among the participants to the, to the workshop. But, uh, enough for the introduction. Let's go to the to the keynote speakers. We will have uh, two keynote speeches, but we will take questions after each of the speeches. And the first one is from uh, Yenite from um, one of our TO3 projects, uh, SME Competitiveness. The project is called Destination SMEs. And Yenite will tell us about uh, the tourism development strategy of the Valmera city and surrounding area. Yenite, you can start the presentation the screen sharing at your convenience. Uh, hello, everybody. I hope that you can hear me and you can see me. Yes, that works. Yes. 
Yes, my Thank presentation you. as well. Uh, so my name is Leonita Prieda Ekleffere. I am from Vizeme Planning Region, and thank you, Interreg Europe Policy Learning Platform, for inviting me today here uh, to share some good practices from the project uh, Destination SMEs. So I'm going to tell you today about a multi-level uh, tourism development strategy of Valmera City and surrounding the area, including uh, Gallia National Park tourist cluster. So uh, moving forward, that should be rather relevant for many of you because uh, Valmiera city in Latvia can be considered a study case of European scale because the uh, well, city is a regional development center with about uh, 30,000 inhabitants. And that size of city is the next level after EU capitals of highest league, about 800 cities, which are rather large. But that type of uh, regional center with uh, 30,000 inhabitants is uh, so-called uh, countryside metropolis or uh, micro city. And uh, if you look at this map on the slide, uh, that the uh, majority of European uh, cities and towns are of that scale, which means uh, it's not about uh, big capitals and uh, how Riga can uh, attract tourists or how, for example, Barcelona could achieve sustainability uh, with extremely large markets, uh, but how smaller economies could survive in this competitive market. So just in a few words uh, about Valmir, this is a medieval city uh, with about 800 years uh, history. This is also an economic center, a regional economic center with a quite active economy above a state average. And uh, the city is also uh, located next to the very popular uh, national park for uh, visitors. But uh, looking back, uh, 10 years back, uh, uh, the main challenges uh, when we think about tourism development uh, was uh, incomplete uh, tourism uh, grow in the region because uh, mainly because of uh, fragmented destination management and resources available. Oh, well, a lot of SMEs with a similar profile and uh, high local competition, uh, and they uh, they were performing just accidental cooperation, and uh, there were also a small amount of uh, local. Uh, products in uh, tourism value chains uh, because of this, uh, can, we can say, very tiny business uh, view. Uh, there were not so many local products and local cooperation. And also 10 years back in Latvia, and especially in some uh, remote, uh, remote areas, there are also signs of uh, shrinking economy, also due to the growing aging population and because that many young people uh, we're leaving the region and the country, uh, which pose serious uh, uh, challenges for many uh, entrepreneurs as well. Uh, well, and another challenge uh, uh, was National Park, which is a major tourist attraction. But uh, the city itself, uh, the Valmira is located a little bit uh, outside of the territory of National Park, let's say just next to it. But sometimes uh, even uh, 11 kilometers matter for some local politicians uh, when they speak about local borders. So, and uh, one more challenge was that there were a uh, weak uh, dialogue among uh, tourism industry and nature conservation uh, agency. So these were those uh, main challenges, but of course, uh, not all of them. So as an answer to those challenges, uh, uh, there were two level strategies uh, created. Uh, the first one was for Valmira Plus for the city and uh, for the three surrounding counties or municipalities uh, with a lot of benefits for local tourism SMEs, which have seen themselves uh, uh, in a one functional region, uh, Valmira, uh, and let's say surrounding uh, of about uh, 20 kilometers from the city limits. And uh, how we started, uh, the first thing was the creation of a tourism advisory council, which involved uh, the local university with tourism program. There were all key stakeholders from the industry and also all the representatives of those uh, four municipalities. 
So we performed the situation analysis and uh, made a tourism strategy for the next 10 years. And also there were uh, this agreement uh, to elaborate a joint destination proposal. And all this uh, was made as a legal agreement uh, between all four municipalities that they share some money to join for the strategy. And uh, what has been achieved so far is that those pragmatic goals are realized with a good success uh, while measuring growth of tourism flow. And uh, for today, as a next level, is that Valmira Plus destination is, uh, is aiming for is the transformation of tourism uh, information centers. So they're moving towards the contemporary work of a destination and management organization. So, but this is uh, not everything. The second level of the strategy was even broader because Valmiera Plus strategy was mainly targeted for a national market and some nearest regional export market, markets such as uh, Estonia or, uh, or uh, even Russia. But then for uh, export strategies, Savalmera Plus has created a bigger cooperation network with the uh, other nine municipalities located uh, in a territory of Gallia National Park and also with uh, major stakeholders from the industry which were interested uh, in export markets and also with the uh, involvement of uh, local universities again. Uh, but also in this time, uh, with the active dialogue uh, with Nature Conservation Agency. So Gaulia National Park Tourism Cluster, with this brand name, uh, Enter Gaulia, was established and uh, it has given uh, the benefits for regional development. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it was for the first time when uh, such a platform for dialogue was created, when tourism industry together with the Nature Conservation Agency, were able to discuss daily development of tourism together with the Nature Conservation Goals. And that was achieved creating a long-term uh, tourism strategy already in 2011. But as you can see, nothing has started from the blank page. Uh, there was already the regional tourism NGO established in year 2000, and uh, that was a kind of mark organization with some municipality members actively uh, participating. Uh, well, after creation of the strategy, uh, a lot of thematic uh, working groups uh, were going on to elaborate different joint products, chain products. It was very, very active phase uh, with about uh, 10 projects implemented uh, together with the most interested uh, industry members. And uh, tourism, when tourism cluster was launched, uh, there were about five, uh, 50 enterprises uh, which were members of the cluster in the beginning. And uh, one of the most uh, important criteria for enterprises to enter the cluster, uh, as they should also pay a certain uh, membership fee, uh, was that they are interested in export markets, that they are interested uh, in development, and that they can accept the values of the national park. Of course, these were not all of the tourism providers operating in the park or in the region because there are about 300 of them, but those were uh, most uh, interested. And uh, I should say that during those last 10 years, the cluster, uh, uh, the cluster members has changed and uh, some of the SMEs uh, has gone or has stopped their businesses and some new with the, with the interest of expert market uh, came in. So as a result showed that we achieved 30% uh, of growth. And uh, I should say that this is uh, counted for the functional territory of uh, uh, park uh, and of, for this destination, not only for some uh, protected area of Natura 2000, for example, because uh, some of the businesses, they are located uh, outside, outside of the protected area or sometimes even uh, outside of the local those uh, park boundaries, but uh, they see themselves as a part of the destination and they benefit uh, from the being there. 
And uh, this is sometimes not bad, even good for sustainability, as uh, many of activities are located outside of the protected area. So, and uh, also for today, as one of the last achievement, the cluster and national park aims to gain is a uh, Europe Park Sustainable Tourism Charter for Gali National Park. Uh, we hope uh, that it's going to happen uh, in a close future, just to adjust nature, conservation, and uh, cultural heritage plants together with a growing interest uh, to attract more and more visitors to area. And uh, for a conclusion, uh, here are listed uh, six main uh, benefits or advantages and uh, six main challenges, challenges when we're thinking about managing and operating joint destination and the tourism cluster. So maybe I will not read them all, but uh, I can say it's just in the keywords that uh, strong brand, cooperation, knowledge sharing, product development, open dialogue. And these are the main, of uh, course, uh, advantages. Uh, but uh, you can see that there are also certain challenges so that you don't think that we are living just in this happy land. There are uh, a lot of things still to do and to develop. But uh, I can say that with those strategies, uh, we can clearly say that our region is uh, one or uh, two steps ahead to other destinations uh, which are trying to achieve the similar goals, but uh, with uh, less resources, let's say. Uh, so I think uh, this is uh, for that point uh, in my presentation, everything. If there are some uh, questions, please uh, feel free to ask them. Yes, the floor is free. Thank you, Lenita, for, for questions, obviously. Uh, you can write them in the chat or just raise your hand. Hopefully we'll, we'll see them. Uh, I, there, I have one or two questions coming already from the, from the chat, so I might just uh, give them one. Um, the, from um, from George, how did you manage to convince the politician to to put their vanity and interventions aside for the better good of the destination? Hmm. Yes, of course, this is very challenging always. But uh, the main thing we are referring to is uh, the rational cooperation, because uh, resources for all the parties, you know, are limited. And uh, while we are competing with each other, <laughs> we are actually losing to other destination. And uh, it is a good uh, rational basis uh, where the, I guess, greater challenge is to overcome the interest of sharing. And uh, this is a challenge uh, looking beyond the boundaries of each other territories. But how we deal with these challenges uh, that we started with some small activities, let's say mm -hmm. some, uh, uh, small pilot uh, activities. For example, we we organized some joint uh, events involving entrepreneurs and showing some uh, quick results. And uh, it really helped us uh, to show the decision makers and to make them believe uh, in the idea of a common, uh, common destination strategy. So those low fruits, those quick results yeah. to show them, yeah. And then you can move to bigger, to bigger yes, things. That's uh, right. Yeah, uh, I have a question from Björn, but you might have answered it in one of the questions. Is it uh, only SME involved, or also NGOs in your your mm -hmm. the, the cluster? I think is it. Is yeah, it... yeah. Uh, there is not uh, only entrepreneurs, but uh, these are majority and are entrepreneurs. There are also the regional university. There are also uh, nine municipalities. Uh, and uh, there are also some NGOs, yes. Are there any specific problems in mixing those, 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 those people? Or, um... uh, the main idea for the cluster is to keep uh, the majority of SMEs. So these are the ones that are okay. uh, doing things and operating in the cluster. Yeah. And when we created also this uh, the board for cluster, so there are also majority of SMEs represented, not only this public sector. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and maybe I see one question we have um, directly related uh, to to the to the very topic of our the workshop. How can a tourism cluster, I mean, as, as a destination management organization, promote the development of sustainable tourism services? How what is the role there? Yeah. 
Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, this is a, a complex one and there is a, no single answer. But uh, I guess the big answer in our case is uh, to achieve this Europark Sustainable Tourism Charter, uh, which is kind of a framework for sustainability for all the national parks globally. Uh, but from, for example, in our case, what we have achieved so far, I can mention this platform uh, when uh, uh, we have uh, created this uh, dialogue uh, among nature conservation uh, representatives, among uh, uh, tourism developers, and among also the uh, businesses. So there are sometimes the cases when nature conservation uh, people see uh, entrepreneurs uh, only like uh, as enemies because they just want to sell far, and that's it. But uh, when they have this platform for, for dialogue and when they are all together that, that then there are cases when uh, uh, nature conservation uh, people can uh, can see that actually those entrepreneurs they really care about the nature they really care about the heritage because for many of them of them that uh, means the development of business and uh, they are uh, sometimes even keen to invest their private resources to keep the heritage. Mm -hmm. And yes, they have this long vision and it's uh, in their interest uh, to keep and preserve uh, the nature, cultural heritage and make it much alive and, uh, and stronger just to keep the businesses for next year. Yeah. Next years. yeah. Okay, thank you for that. Just checking if there are any other questions. I don't see any through the, through the chat at this stage. Bob, maybe you can help me checking if someone raised his hand. Um, no, it's fine at the moment. Can see. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Lenita. Then I think we can uh, we can move to to our second presentation uh, presentation, which comes from the um, the Christoph project, and we have a duo presenting it, uh, Bjorn and Trinidad. So I let you I let you start. Bjorn, is it you sharing you. your screen first? Yeah. Yeah, I will start. Can you see it now? That works fine. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, my name is Bjorn Lehn. I'm a developer in the heritage sector in region Vestergötaland. I'm not working in the tourist sector. But uh, since the last years, I have worked a lot with connecting heritage sector with tourist sector. And we were partner in the Krista project. Um, this story began in, uh, I think, 2013. And the background is that Vestergötaland has a long industrial history and is still a strong industrial region, but it's transforming very rapidly. And uh, there was an initiative from our culture board to uh, focus on the industrial history of the region, that industrial heritage from in the region. And there are many different organizations interpreting this transformation on this story. And the majority of them are not regional museums or municipal uh, museums, but NGOs or associations running small uh, sites in uh, closed workshops and so on in rural areas. And we start in 2013, but in 2015, we formed a collaboration platform for industrial heritage in the region called Prisma Vestergötaland. And this cooperation platform has a common vision, long-term goals. We have an annually updated action plan. We have a working group for uh, program. We're running a website on industrial heritage and uh, interpretation around industrial heritage and so on. But in the Krista project, we uh, focused on industrial heritage and tourism. Was there a potential for uh, increasing the industrial heritage tourism in the region? And the answer is maybe, <laughs> but it's a long way. So what we did in the Krista project was that we made a local action plan. And that local action plan was to start 
of a regional heritage tourist group that we started in 2019 as a result of Krista. And this is a working group within Prisma. So there are regional museums, um, municipal museums, and NGOs. Uh, I think we are about 400 different partners, if you count them, that cooperate on uh, industrial heritage and industrial heritage tourism. And our goal is to strengthen the role of heritage in the tourist sector. Uh, we first focused on industrial heritage, but we realized that the rest of the heritage sector has the same problem with connecting to the tourist sector. So we widened and broadened uh, what we are working with. So today we are that working group that coordinates the heritage sector towards the tourist sector. Um, and we have a very close cooperation with our regional tourist board. Uh, and they have a new strategy that's called Stepping Up Sustainability. And it's spot on what we think is the future for tourism. Sustainable tourism um, with a close cooperation with the local actors in the sites. And so on, bottom up perspective in tourism. And today, this cooperation platform, Prisma Vestia Taland, is coordinating four of the partners' ongoing tourism projects. We have developed a mobile interface guide for small sites so that every NGO or any, every association doesn't have to pay money to get an app, but they can use this uh, interface, web interface for mobile guide uh, free. Uh, we organize courses and guidance for small site in interpretation. We have developed coordination and division of responsibility with the regional tourist organization. And we have spent a lot of time on doing that because when we started this, we thought that we will brand and sell heritage tourists to the rest of the world. But uh, during the process, we realized that it's better that the tourist board does that. At, that we uh, focus on the inhold, and they are the one that brand, not we. And um, this is a long-term cooperation. The cooperation has no budget. Each partner use their own budget and put in uh, money and uh, time in the cooperation. But today, if we count the projects that we are into, it's about 400,000 euros. And our organization, the Regional uh, Development, Cultural Development Administration, is coordinating this platform. And as you maybe know, the Bicultor project, we are partners, the Prisma platform is partnering the Bicultor project that started uh, this year. Um, our organization is the formal partner, but the, the Prisma partnership is, is part of it. I don't know, was it five minutes? What is too short, is it okay? It was absolutely spot on, thank you yeah. very much. I can say something more. If you see that picture here, this is what associations can do. 15 historic ships running into the Lake of Vänern for one week with a stop in every great harbor, every big harbor in the sea with program in the harbor, and so on. Our organization, we are 220 employees in the region working with heritage. We could never have done this. It can only be done, done by an association or, or NGOs. So the cooperation with those partners is extremely important for us. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Bjorn, uh, for your presentation. It is very inspiring, um, very much so uh, also uh, for uh, the region of Granada. So we have uh, Trini here who is going to share um, how they got inspired by um, the Industrial Heritage Network uh, Prisma in, uh, in West and uh, uh, so the, the word is yours Trini. Hello everybody, good afternoon. My name is Trini Manrique. I work for the County Council of Granada, which is in the south part of Spain, in Andalusia. 
And as Bjorn and the Vastra Gotaland region, we were also partner of Krista project. Uh, our participation on Krista project made possible that uh, we identify uh, a good practice in this uh, Swedish region, Vastra Gotaland, uh, linked to our territorial needs, especially to needs that we have in the north part of the province. Well, this good practice is the one you have just listened now uh, from previous speaker, my colleague Bjorn. Um, well, uh, we pay attention to um, how they created uh, this uh, network uh, of divulgation centers in a rural area uh, with this um, important uh, heritage in order to attract tourism. Uh, we were very surprised because despite at the beginning we thought we were very different, they are from the very north of Europe and we are from the very south, um, but actually we, we share many things because both territories have uh, small municipalities, dispersed municipalities, they have a, an important heritage, um, many small centers, uh, that isolated uh, doesn't attract enough tourism, but if they are coordinated and they are seen as a package, they, have an, they can have an important tourist attraction. Uh, by this time, the County Council was working on another initiative in the same, in the same territorial area of the province. Uh, and this initiative was um, that we were drawing uh, a strategy uh, to submit to UNESCO the declaration as Geopark to this area. Uh, but thanks to the inspiration on the Swedish uh, approach, we decided to include in our Geopark strategy uh, the creation of this network of centers of divulgation in order to, to promote tourism. Well, this network was finally created in May 2018, and today 35 centers are collaborating on the on the common brand. Uh, some of them are public, uh, owned by town councils, another one are private, um, but all of them have a common directory uh, of contacts where you can see key data about centers, also a common directory of activity. Some of them are um, offered from an individual point of view, another one are organized in common by several centers. We also have a, well, a, a plan of stand training. We have several tools uh, for communicating, common tools, as maps, routes around centers, a common leaflet. Uh, we also broadcast on the screens of all the networked centers uh, Krista videos that is a way to aware uh, to increase awareness about the importance of heritage i don't know um i don't know if you can see these red things yes sorry but i don't i don't know what happened because i'm not doing anything as far as i know sorry for that i don't know either just go on i think it's yeah. <laughs> it's the, the first time i see it so. okay uh, well, um, an important communication tool is that we created a website platform and it is very important because it supports network. It, um, it's another way to, to give a tool for the network itself and also have a, give a common visualization to all centers. Uh, besides, we have a blog section where local residents can post entries on history, festivals, customs. Actually, this thing is also, was also inspired by Prisma website. Um, well, uh, we have um, organized all these things uh, with the collaboration of several regional stakeholders, especially uh, the two rural, rural development groups, because this north part of the province have um, two sub areas. We also have a very strong collaboration with uh, Granada Provincial Tourist Board that actually is part of the County Council organization in some way. Trini, Trini, one minute, please. 
Okay. Of course, we have uh, the collaboration of town councils and, and other representatives of the divulgation centers. Well, thanks to it, uh, we have increased our tourism. Actually, it, the number of visitors have been doubled from 2017 uh, to 2019. Also, we have increased our, um, the overnight stays uh, per visitor. Um, well, in July 2020, we got uh, the declaration as Geopark by UNESCO and it was the second time we submitted it and in this second time we, we uh, introduced uh, this uh, network of uh, divulgation centers. About budget, well, it, uh, the website flat platform was founded by, through a pilot action approved by Interact Europe and the rest is just the staff, uh, staff time of the county council. That's all. Thank you. Well, thank you very much uh, for your presentations. Um, I think it is a, a very inspiring uh, story how you have been transferring from uh, the north to the south, uh, your experiences uh, enabling better collaboration between the dispersed uh, centers and towns and uh, making sure that uh, everybody can, um, you know, act under common branding and so on. Uh, you will see some really impressive examples of how this has been done in the chat. Uh, there's uh, lots of links available. We also have a question. Uh, actually, uh, two um, interested uh, people, uh, Emmanuel and Laura, asking about the app that was mentioned by Björn, I think, in the first presentation. Uh, the question is, with the app, do you use the reports to study the number of visitors, the behavior, the hours? Do you do some prospects for the projects? Um, maybe you can uh, say something more about this app that you have been mentioning. Yeah, the first thing is that it isn't an app. It's just a mobile interface on our website. And the answer is that we don't measure anything by that. Maybe we should, but we don't today. <laughs> so it's one-way communication. Uh, spreading films, photos, and stories for visitors in, in small sites. And the reason we did that is that the site is, uh, there is not only open, uh, it's a great risk that it's closed when the visitors come. So this is a possibility to, to take part of the story of the place when it's closed. So it's a very simple interface, but it's a start. Well, thank you very much, Björn. Maybe I can also um, ask uh, Trini to say something about how you measure. Uh, you have been saying that you doubled uh, the number of tourists that have been coming. You also doubled the, the length of the overnight stays, uh, which is very impressive. How do you measure that? Do you have a special app for that? Uh, well, uh, it is the Provincial Tourist Board who measure it. Uh, I suppose in contact with tourist office of the area, but I don't really know the methodology. This is our data that they sent us, but I don't really know the specific way to measure it. Sorry. <laughs> No problem. Thank you very much. Um, so maybe we have time for one short question to both of you um, with regard to the, the key success factors. I would be very interested, uh, uh, both Björn and Trini, if you could say the, 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 the three most important success factors for you um, were what? Branding, cooperation? Uh, maybe you can say both uh, very shortly what you think. Patience. So three times patience. Yeah, uh, now a long time perspective. It's almost the same, but uh, you have to work in a long time perspective when you work with associations. And it takes time. Thank it's you. like a ketchup bottle. <laughs> Thank you very much. And Trini, what do you think the three most important success factors that you can think of? Uh, I think a key question was to be able to visualize a common project for the territory. Because in this area, as I told you before, actually there are two areas. And in some way, you know, sometimes territorial, um, the territories are um, competitive between them when they are neighbor. And sometimes it's difficult to collaborate because at the end there are some key agents that play an important role. 
And I think to visualize this uh, objective of having uh, the declaration by UNESCO of being able to attract more tourism, um, I think it was uh, the key thing to be able to attract key agents in order to make them to collaborate around a common project for first time. Very good. Well, thank you very much for, for outlining this for us. If you have more questions to Björn or Trini, which can be answered, uh, please don't uh, hesitate, put them in the chat. Uh, we will uh, um, make sure that we can answer them later also for you, um, whatever comes up uh, also during this uh, workshop. So I think, uh, Luc, uh, if you agree, I would say it's, uh, it's time for a short break for everybody. Uh, so uh, you can use it to speak uh, with uh, the people that are here. You're going to be allocated automatically, or you can use it also to have a short break, um, get a new coffee or something like that. And uh, we will see you uh, back at 1500 sharp uh, uh, to come together for our breakout sessions, uh, the two working groups. So thank you very much and uh, see you soon uh, in these uh, working groups.